And if this continues in 10 or 15 years, you won't be watching the U.S. stock market. You'll be watching the Chinese markets. And they will be determining whether our companies survive. It'll be us. It'll be us on the outside looking in. And then Americans are going to wonder, why do we no longer invent great things? Why do we now have to do whatever China wants in the world in order to get the medicines we need to cure my mom or my dad's Alzheimer's? And the answer will be because when they were displacing us, your policymakers were too busy arguing with each other and playing dumb, ridiculous games on a regular basis. Meanwhile, China was focused like a laser with a plan, and they executed on it. This is not a game. I can think of no more significant issue from the perspective of history than what is happening now. And do not misunderstand me. I do not come here to say that I want to be unnecessarily aggressive with China or that I want there to be a confrontation. China is going to be a rich and a powerful country. And we have no problem with that. We can't have any problem with that. But there has to be a balance. It cannot be a China that is rich and powerful and an America that is weak and not prosperous. Because those imbalances are what create wars. Those imbalances are what create misery. Those imbalances are what destabilize the planet. That can't be. We need to recalibrate this relationship. It needs to be rebalanced on the trade side. It needs to be protective on our national security side. It needs to be equalized. And if it is, China can still be very successful. They're going to invent things. They're going to create jobs. They're going to become more prosperous. And that is fine. We've been doing that for 100 years. Every person in this gallery, sitting in the gallery, every person here in the well of the Senate on the floor, everyone you know has products on them, a phone, a belt, made in another country. The issue is not that other countries make things and we don't. It's not about us dominating everything. It's about balance. And this is not balanced. This is headed to a dramatic imbalance. And the imbalance used to be they made cheap things and sent it back to us so we had lower prices. That's what's happened for the last 30 years. They made cheaper t-shirts, they assembled the phones cheaper, and they shipped it back to the United States, leading to lower prices. That's not the imbalance I'm talking about. The imbalance we're headed to is they, are, they control state-of-the-art artificial intelligence. They control the state-of-the-art quantum computing, which means that nothing can be encrypted anymore which means there are no such things as secure cars left. The President of the United States one day will not be able to talk to his national security officials anywhere in the world without the Chinese hearing it. Because no matter what encryption you put in, they'll break it with a quantum computer. That's, what, that's the imbalance I'm talking about. The imbalance I'm talking about is one day we'll have a dispute with China on something on national security somewhere in the world, and they will threaten to cut off our supply of biomedicines. In essence, threaten the lives of Americans not getting medicine unless we cave to their desires. That's the imbalance I'm talking about. The imbalance I'm talking about is one where they dominate aerospace, where they are the nation that controls satellites and satellite communication. They are the nation that controls 5G. We're headed towards autonomous vehicles. Autonomous vehicles will depend on 5G technology. And China will dominate the world in 5G, and we will depend on it. So we're going to build a fleet of autonomous trucks and autonomous cars, and none of them will work if the Chinese decide to shut it down because they dominate that field. That's the imbalance I'm talking about. And if this all sounds fantastic, apocalyptic, look it up. Research it. And I promise you, you will not find a single person versed on this topic that would disagree with what I'm saying. This is the threat that we face, and we are not facing it squarely. So I would advise those who cover this issue to stop covering it as a political issue. There are some things so important to this country that I don't care what the politics of it are, and most of my colleagues don't either, because these are definitional things that will define the 21st century. I would advise us not to cover this as a purely economic issue, because there is a, there is a way to grow the trade gap in the short term we can sell them a lot more of the things China is willing to buy anyway. They don't intend to lead the world in those things in exchange for them dominating us in the long run. Get rid of the short-term thinking and start thinking our competitor has a 50, 100, 20, and 5-year plans. And we don't even know what we're going to be talking about next week. It is time to wake up to this threat. 
because we have two ways forward. There can be a balanced relationship between two great powers leading to a world that is stable and secure and prosperity, or we can have an imbalanced world in which a rising power in China does so at the expense, at the direct expense, of a falling status quo power in the United States, and that instability will lead to conflict and a way of life for Americans that we will find unacceptable. And then, then it will be too late. And then we will have to explain, maybe to our children, and most certainly to our grandchildren, why the America we grew up in led the world and all the great innovations and all the great ideas and provided prosperity to millions of people here and around the world. And the, and the America they get to grow up in is a second-tier power.